Hey, coaches, we got a special guest tonight with us, Austin Trotter, who is the head football coach at uh, Pine Lake Prep High School in North Carolina. That's a charter school. Uh, Austin's heading into his second year, and, and he's, uh, he's like some of us now. He, he took over a wing T program, and he's turning them into a spread program. So he, he uses uh, lots of air raid concepts, lots of run and shoot concepts, and even some Baylor concepts mixed in there. And, and like all of us, he's been fighting a good fight against COVID and uh, frustrated. He can't get his hands on his kids yet, but uh, been been zooming it up with uh, like all of us. And uh, he, he's sitting on uh, sitting on uh, ready, waiting for go. So today he is going to teach us his flood concept, which is kind of a, a a 94, and then adding a little run and shoot into it, a three man flood concept. So Austin, excited to have you, man. Teach us, man. We want to learn. Hey, I appreciate you, uh, you having me on here, Coach. Um, been a big Joe Salas fan for a while now. Met you back at the Air Raid Clinic here in Statesville back in April. Uh, you know, we talked about really love the the um, culture building that you do there. It's been a huge part of what we did since we took over here. But, yeah, you know, that's we came in. It's been a big adjustment for our guys. Um, so, you know, I laughed with, with my AD, who used to be the head coach, that, we're going to throw more passes in one game than you threw all year. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of times we came pretty close to it. But, um, you know, we had a really big – we had a growing year. We had a real young team. I started a freshman at quarterback and and multiple young guys all over the field. Um, you know, we went four and seven this first year, had our growing pains. But I'm really, really looking forward to seeing these guys grow and where we're going in the future. And, you know, a big part of that um, – has been growing the program and it's been because we went to a spread offense. Um, you know, you hear guys talk all about the time about getting those basketball guys out and all these other guys. And, and it's true. You know, they, these guys don't want to sit in the phone, you know, in a box and, and beat their heads into one each other all day. Uh, they want to get out here and run around and do what they do in the backyard. So, um, yeah, that's where, you know, this, this whole offense that we kind of blended some, like you said, some run and shoot, some air raid, a little bit of Baylor stuff uh, really came from. So, Let's see if I can share this here with you. Yeah, just here's a little information. If anybody wants to get a hold of me, I'm always available. Uh, you can email me, hit me up on Twitter at any time. Um, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. I'm always willing to share a film or anything you want to talk about. Uh, what we call our flood concept, I just want to go the way we kind of the evolution of it. Uh, we began running the earliest version is back in about 2007 when I, in my second year as an offensive coordinator, I was actually at a 3A school and we were really going spread and um, we needed something that we wanted to change up from a traditional, you know, air raid Y cell 94 play. Um, we ran it. I got a few diagrams here for you, but just real quick. Um, this is how we initially, initially ran it. Uh, you know, our middle receiver here ran a speed out at three yards versus, uh, you know, cover three, we, we ran this a lot. Even some cover two, we try to hit that sail in there behind it. But this was really good for us early on. And we threw this from the pocket. Um, and then last year, you know, this has always been in our playbook for a while now. But last year we went into the season and we had a freshman quarterback that was about five foot nine, a really good athlete. But – he struggled throwing the ball from the pocket, and he especially struggled throwing this this ten yard out from the pocket. You know, young guy, not quite physically developed. Um, so we had to try to find a way that we could get him more on the move, more on the edge to shorten this throw. So during my look of what we needed to do, I came across the run and shoot slide concept, and here's just one kind of variation of it. Um, you know, a lot of ways it looks like Y corner snag with uh, the corner here and, and this little sit right here with the bubble. Uh, but what really stood out to me was the bubble, watching how that right there impacted this outside defender and, and really kind of sucked him downhill. So what we did was we combined the two concepts together. All right. So we kept the, the must outside release vertical and – the outcut from from 94 but we included the bubble route from the middle receiver from the slide and we did either a half roll or a full roll run and shoot style 
to get him, the quarterback, on the edge a little quicker, shorten the distance on that throw for him uh, so that he wasn't trying to make that throw from the pocket. Um, and the way that we teach this right here is, you know, get to try to get to eight yards, but again, find grass. And, and you'll see in the clips here how our guys here, our age here, really does a good job of, of reading the defenders and, and getting into that grass. Maybe it's not always at 10, maybe it's not always at eight, but he understands how to get where he needs to be. So these are just our base assignments for this. Um, our outside receiver has that outside release vertical. Our middle receiver has a bubble. And the way that we teach it is the back pedal. Uh, instead of just your traditional open turn and run bubble, we'll have him just open straight to the quarterback and back pedal out. Uh, it was an easy quarterback for the quarterback on the run to make, an easy throw for him to make. Um, and it allowed the, the receiver to, to give a good, a good frame right here for him to throw it to and get straight up field. Uh, our inside receiver, we tell him minimum eight, minimum one ten, but again, this is this is fine grass and get open. Um, our offensive line and our running back, what we call 60-61 protection. That's just a six-man sprint out protection. Um, our back is responsible for the edge. And then our quarterback, he's going to roll to the call side. So we'll get into our first clip. So you'll see here, now ignore the protection. I don't know what happened here. It's awful. Um, our back should come off the edge and he gets kind of caught up inside. So again, we're going we're to focus on the outside on this one. Um, outside release vertical here. Number two is going to open and back pedal. Three should be getting to 10 yards, but again, you're going to see how he kind of cuts this off a little bit here. We'll run through it and then I'll run it back again. Now you'll see. Can you, can you hit that in slow motion? Yeah, I'm going to try to. So as you'll see here now, all right, we got pressure off the end. The back should have picked him up. We're putting him in a bind. And this is why I like the back pedal better than that three yard out, because now he's going to be able to play both if we were still running that out cut. But because we're back pedaling with number two, he has to come downhill to take this away. All right, and now really the quarterback should have probably thrown this but I gave him the benefit of the doubt that he saw this defender coming downhill and, you know, he cuts it off a little short. But that's the space that we create by getting that vertical clearing out the corner, running the bubble with number two, and now number three is able to come in behind it. All right. So this was actually one of our earlier early in the season games. Um, we do a better job. We just don't catch the ball here. But you, again, you can kind of see what exactly happens. Running back picks up the edge. Now he should have, you know, caught that for us. But so again, he's going to attack up. He sees this defender fly downhill. As soon as he sees that happen, he knows now he can snap this thing off and get outside and he's going to be wide open. We'll go slow with it here. They had a they had three 300 pound linemen on this team. So we were just cutting them. Um, back picks up the edge. Defender flies down on the bubble. He just should have made a better job. Had his hands wrong, dropped the ball. But again, he's got the angle on both. He catches that, turns up field. That's a 10 yard gain for us. Now, this right here is a, a really good look at it. Let me get back to the beginning. And we got this a lot. You know, teams would put three over three on us. All right. Uh, keep six in the box, put one high. But again, the same situation happens. Outside release is going to clear that corner out. He's going to end up pulling him down. He does a really good job here as well because it's second and five. 
He releases yeah. inside of this backer, and as soon as he sees that safety fly downhill, he snaps that outside. Run through this one slow motion for you as well. So those are the, the three clips I want to show you tonight. Um, you know, as you can see, it really put that flat defender either in cover three or however they're running it in a, in a really big bind. Uh, and what's really good too is if you're a team that throws bubble screens outside, teams are going to start coming downhill quickly to attack that. You know, you heard them once or twice with it, they're going to get a little antsy. They're coming downhill, they're going to take that away, and that's really going to open up the outcut behind it. There's just something about that bubble that that the walk player just can't. They it's like you're jiggling the worm. They can't they can't avoid it. The uh, we actually we ran this. Well, we practiced this last year. We uh, th that would have been called uh, slot right 98 99 to us. And I love that route. It's one of my favorite seven on seven routes. And don't ask me why, but I didn't call it. I, I don't think a single time during the year. And I struggled with the protection on the sprint out. You know, that was, that was, it, it felt like I had to invest so much on the sprint out protection. And then when I didn't call a dang thing, cause I'm just dumb, uh, we, we're, we didn't, we we're not putting it in this year, but it, that's always been one of my favorite routes that in the same, I'm with you. When you add that bubble in, it, the walk player just can't, he can't help himself. He ha he has to trigger downhill. And it all is it's up something, yeah. It's, there's something about it, man. They just see it, and all of a sudden, it's it's boom. They got to come hit it. You right. know? And I guess so much they, they want to make that highlight hit. As soon as he catches it, make that tackle for loss, and uh, you know have that big that big play for him, man. But it's you know you can you can definitely use it to bait them, and then and once you hit this a couple of times, it slows them down on coming down on your bubble screens too. So um it's a good it's a good route to kind of pair if you are a big bubble screen team. Protect, protects your bubble yeah, yeah it does. how many uh do you do you know offhand how many times you threw it last year not enough same thing um you know we, we probably threw it three or four times a game um, yeah that's a great early on you know and then as the season kind of went on teams did a little bit adjust to it um and, and there were some other routes that we we kind of started liking a little bit better. But, yeah, I mean, it was it was one of those things we'd try to hit when we could, especially if we were in that second or third and, you know, four, five, six range. Um, just because, you know, that when we were snapping that off, yeah, we tell him to get to eight. But like I said, he's finding grass. Right. You know, that's, that's just what we tell him. You know, find the grass. If it's there, take it. Mm -hmm. um, so, really, it turned into a five, six, seven-yard outcut for us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, we ran a little more earlier in the year, but as the season went on, you know, teams kind of started playing a little bit of coverage games on us, and, and we found a few things that we liked a little bit better as our guys. Again, you know, we came into this thing and, and trying to teach them a, a brand new style of play. So uh, it took a little while to, you know, the first couple of weeks, we were very, very limited on what we were going to be able to call. Um, and that rollout protection does take a lot of time. I mean, it, it really does. Uh, luckily, my running back uh, was five foot eleven, two hundred and ten pounds. He actually played guard the previous three years before I got here, um, so he was able to kind of be physical and get to that edge. Uh, you know, so well, we if you're, you're the one three or four story. times a game, it's it's worth it. I mean, if, it, if yeah. you're getting that well, kind of production out of it, then it's worth putting the investment in. I think. And and we probably we spent more time in our sprint out than we did throwing pocket. This past year, again, the five foot nine freshman quarterback, um, you know, he's got a bright future, but you know, we, we've got some development to do. So, uh, we had to get him on the edge, let him throw. He's an athletic kid, so he can throw on the run. Um, I mean, I would venture to say that we probably had ten to fifteen sprint out passes a game. Uh, so we spent a lot of time working that protection. You know, we had to change it up. Team started kind of, you know, found some ways to hurt us a little bit with it, but uh, and we started really putting the back, 
responsible for the end later on. But again, if, if you're going to do it, man, and if you've got a kid that can roll out and run and throw the ball, getting him on the edge like that is, is a really good way, especially if he doesn't have the strongest arm because you're shortening the distance on those throws. So you can still hit that 10 yard out, but you're not having to have a strong arm to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you, man. I, I, I loved it. I'm, I'm glad you came on and showed it to us. Makes me want to rethink uh, what I need to get it back in there because you made it look uh, perfect. Well, I appreciate you, know, you doing this, brother. Hey, it's always nice to be on, you know, hand select which plays you want to put in there for everybody to see. So uh, there's a few that weren't quite as pretty. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. You know, I love watching the, all of, you know, the, the different clinics and stuff you, you've had on the channel. So, uh, you know, I always pick up something. And um, I think I've been the one – I'm going to say the positive of COVID. I'm going to find some positivity here is uh, – you know, a lot of coaches being willing to share their stuff and guys getting out here and learning. And, you know, I'm, I love learning different schemes. So I'm diving into all kinds of stuff and, you know, maybe not throwing it in the playbook yet, but at least just trying to add a little bit more knowledge. So uh, I appreciate all you've been doing that. I'm with you, man. I, I told someone the other day, if, if, if you didn't get better over this off season, there's something wrong with you because you could yeah, live no more. Yeah, they were just no so more. Hard. If I have time excuses for this one, for this one. There, there is just so much great stuff out there that uh, it's, it was impossible not to, not to get a lot better. But I appreciate you doing this, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.